Um, this is a very interesting question which I came across on Facebook. Um, it was from the Oxford University Journey Group. Um, and the question reads, um, how many factors does 10 to the power of 20 um, have? Um, I thought it was very interesting because it's kind of hard, I think, but maybe not as hard as you may think. Um, but it's certainly very different from most of the questions I've seen. Um, and it really requires you to understand about what's going on with factors, prime factors, and prime factorization. Um, I want to show you in a couple of ways of, 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 of approaching this question, I suppose. Um, the first way is if this question was like in an exam setting, and I just want to get the question done. You know, I just want to find the answer as quickly as possible. Um, and and that, that's one way of doing it. And then another way afterwards is we're going to delve slightly deeper into why the answer is the answer. Hopefully I've got it correct. Um, and, and kind of why the answer is like that. And does the answer make sense? And what can I learn from it, really? Um, so because it asks 10 to the power 20, um, there, there's really no way I'm going to write I'm not going to really work out 10 to the power 20 because I just I just couldn't physically do it. There's going to be loads. Um, so I'm going to start small. I'm going to start small. Uh, and that's one of the general problems solving strategies that you have is like do a simpler version of it. So I want to start off with really basic and um, what 10 to the power is zero. So I'm not going to do 10 to the power 20. I'll do 10 to the power zero. What equals one? Um, and what factors are one? Well, it's one. Um, it seems almost trivial and almost like why the heck am I doing this? But hopefully you'll see a pattern developing. Um, now we move up to the next one. Well, 10 to the power 1, well, that equals 10. And then the factors of 10 are, well, 1 and 10, 2 and 5. And there are four factors in total. So no surprise there. And then I'm going to go one deeper. And, well, this is 10 squared, so 10 to the power 2. Uh, and that number is 100. And the factors are 1 to 100, uh, 2 and 50, 4 and 25, 5 and 50, 10, and there are 9. And I think you may be beginning to spot some sort of pattern here. I'm not too sure. I'm just going to do one more, um, just, just for good measure. And then 10 to the power 3, and then the factors, oh, well, 10 to the power 3 is 1,000. And then the factors of 1,000 are oh, this blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, and there are 16. And hopefully you begin to see some sort of pattern that, but these are all kind of square numbers here. So um, uh, this, this is actually equal to one squared. This is two squared. This is three squared. And this is four squared. Um, and then, well, again, when we look at 10 to the power zero, zero gives you one squared. 10 to the power one gives you two squared. 10 to the power two, gives you three squared, 10 to the power three gives you four squared. So each time, if I say, well, 10 to the power question mark, well, whatever number that question mark represents, I'm going to add one to it, and I'll square it. Uh, so that, that's, that seems like the pattern. So 10 to the power 20, well, it's going to be 20 plus one, which equals 21, and it's squared. Um, so the answer will be, well, 441. Um, so if I was in an exam or under some sort of time constraint, because um, this has all the hallmarks of something like a scholarship question, either for an 11 plus or a 13 plus, um, then yeah, that's it, done. I don't, I, don't, I don't really care for anything else, job done. Um, but um, I really do understand what, what's going on here. Why, why is this pattern happening? Um, and is there a reason for it? And can I justify this question mark plus one squared? But why is it happening? Well, in order to really do that, we have to delve a little bit deeper into what, what makes a number. Uh, and one way that we can view of what makes a number is to prime factorize it. So it's not the only way. Uh, you can use number bonds for addition, but um, because we're delving with 10 times 10 and 10 times 10 times 10, we're going to talk about prime factorization because they're all multiplied. Um, so 10 to the power of 0, well, that equals 1. This, I can't really prime factorize that at all. Uh, 10 to the power, oh, sorry, 10 to the power of 0. Uh, 10 to the power of 1, however, equals 10. And when I prime factorize that, well, that becomes, well, 2 times 5. And then 10 to the power of 2, when I prime factorize that, well, that becomes 2 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 2. 
Again, no surprise here. And 10 to the power 3 in a similar fashion would be, well, 2 to the power 3 times 5 to the power 3. Um, and it was, well, well, there's nothing new about this. And it's true. I mean, most, most students would eventually learn this at some stage, uh, maybe not in this layout, um, but definitely wouldn't be too foreign to them. But we're going to connect up, well, this and all these prime uh, and all these factors. What has the prime factorization got to do with the number of factors? Well, let's try and find out. Try and find out. Again, we're going to start small. We're going to start small. If we focus on 10 first, um, so 10 to the power 1, well, the prime factors are 2 and 5. Um, but there are four factors, which is 1 and 10, uh, 2 and 5. So these are the factors, and this is the prime factorization of it. And I'll, I'll just put 1 here, just so I'm consistent with, with, my, with my notation. Um, well, 2 to the power 1... Yeah, okay, it's 2 and yeah, 5 to the power 1. But there are actually some hidden numbers in there as well. Well, if we consider 2 to the power 0 as a potential number, and then 5 to the power 0, and then 2 to the power 1, and then 5 to the power 1, and we'll see what happens here. Um, can I get a 1 from these numbers? Well, yes, I can, because I've got, well, this 2 to the power 0 and 5 to the power 0, they're both 1s. So if I multiply this one with this one, I'll get my 1. Now, if I multiply this one with the 5, well, this is 1 times 5, that gives me the 5. And if I multiply my 2 to the power 1 with the 5 to the power 0, well, that's 1 times 2, which gives me 2. And then 2 times, what well, 2 to the power 1, 5 to the power 1, well, that gives me this remaining factor there. So from these prime factors, if I consider 2 to the power 0, 5 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 5 to the power 1, and every single combination um, that these make, then I can work out not only my actual factors, but the number of factors as well. Or rather, not only can I work out the number of factors, I can actually work out the factors itself. So, well, let, let's scale this up to 10 to the power 2. Let's clear this on this as well. Let's clear up this bit. So let's try 10 to the power 2. Well, this is uh, 2 to the power 2 times 5 to the power 2. And we really know that we've got these factors here. I'm, I'm not very lazy to write out, so I'm just going to screen shift it and just drag it over. And let's see if we can find all these factors. So again, I'm going to write it down there as well. 2 to the power of 0, uh, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2. So these are the possible numbers that this can form. And here I've got 5 to the power of 0, 5 to the power of 1, 5 to the power of 2. And let's try every single combination. Well, if I start off with this one, and I times it by the 5 to the power of 0, well, that gives me the 1, because it is 1, 1. Here, I do 1 times 5, well, that gives me the 5. Here, I do the 1 times the 25, I get the 25. And it really comes like resorts down to almost like a game of bingo, um, where I'm trying to circle out all the numbers. And then, uh, so this is 2, well, 2 times 1, well, that gives me the 2. 2 times the 5, well, that gives me the 10. 2 times the 5 squared, well, that gives me 50. And then, um, well, let's get rid of them. It's good. I've done all of those. And the last combination, well, would be this is four. Uh, four times one, well, that gives me the four. And the four times a five, that gives me a 20. And the four times a 25, uh, well, that gives me 100. And bingo, we've, we've got all our numbers. Um, and this is really uh, an opportunity to explore what's going on, how are our prime factors helping us to find the factors, and hence the more number of factors. Um, so from there, we can just kind of like say, well, if we have 10 to the power of 20, well, that's going to be 2 to the power of 20 times 5 to the power of 20. Um, and along here, well, there's going to actually be 21 numbers. And here, it's going to form another 21 numbers. And well, for every single well, combination that you're going to get, 
well, you're going to get, well, 441. Because each one has to be partnered with all the others. Um, but that's that's kind of like the reason why, as opposed to, oh, yeah, that's that's a funny coincidence. Um, because it's not. It's not. Um, when, when you delve into prime factors and how numbers are broken down and they're reassembled, um, you can actually break it down into a variety of different shapes uh, and different structures um, to solve a particular problem. Um, so it's a real, it's a real, um, a real, a real nice question in terms of assessing how children can view prime numbers, view prime factorization, how it's connected to its factors, um, and just have a little play with them. Um, because it was I enjoyed the question anyway.